Hi, I'm Chris Walker here with another episode of Rio's How To Series. Today's episode is all about selecting the right tapered leader and then perhaps even more importantly, tuning the tapered leader to match the conditions at hand. Uh, a lot of anglers, when they think of taper, they think of fly lines. And it's true that there are a lot of different tapers of fly lines and that's very important to the performance of your casting and uh, selecting the right one for the situation. But I would argue that the tapered leader is just as important, if not more so. Uh, the taper leader basically just acts like a continuation of the front taper of your fly line. And because of that, your fly line taper is only as good as the leader you put on the end. So let's start with the basics of the, uh, the parts of a tapered leader. So I've got one here. It's about a 9 foot uh, 4x leader. And there's a skinny end and a thick end. Basically the skinny end you call the tippet. And if you run your fingers up it, you can feel that it stays the same diameter for a little while until it slowly starts to, uh, to taper up. So that's about the tippet section right there, two and a half or three feet. Then if I continue up the taper, I can feel that diameter get larger and larger until it sort of reaches its maximum. So on this leader, that's about the length we're talking about there, maybe another three feet. And last but not least, you have a long level thick section at the end and that's called the butt. And in this case, it's about four feet on this leader. So those are your three sections, your butt, your taper, and your tippet. Now there's different attributes of those three sections that can make your leader cast differently. Uh, the first one is overall length. So the rule of thumb I like to use is more weight close to the fly will make the fly turn over more powerfully. So you can cast a bigger fly and you can turn it over into wind a little bit better too. Uh, less weight close to the fly, so weight further back from the fly will make it turn over more delicately. So you can have a uh, gentle presentation, but you can't throw quite as big a fly. Uh, so there's two ways to, to achieve that result, uh, or two ways to modify where the weight is relative to the fly. The first is overall leader length. So if your leader is very long, that puts the fly very far from the tip of your fly line. And the tip of your fly line is typically heavier than the leader. So in that case, the weight's far away. Uh, if your leader is very short, the weight of the fly line is closer to the fly and it turns over more powerfully. So those are the basics of how tapers affect casting. And now I'll show you just a couple of examples of leaders that Rio makes for specific applications. And we'll kind of use that rule of thumb to describe how they work. So this one is a, uh, a six foot big nasty leader. And as the name suggests, it's made specifically for throwing big flies, big heavy wind resistant flies. And I'll uncoil this one and just show you how we've achieved that result. So first is the length, it's only six feet long, which is a relatively short leader, and that contributes to it turning over powerfully. Second is actually the taper design. So it's only a six foot leader, but here you can see the taper, or rather the butt section, is about four feet long. And now as I move into the tapered section, you can see that's much shorter, that's only about 18 inches. And the tippet here, we'll call it six inches to a foot long, something like that. So it's almost all butt material in this leader, there's not as much tippet. Uh, and for that reason, it turns a big fly over more powerfully. And when we talk about big flies, it's usually something more like this side of the fly box where you've got your streamers. It could be a big wind resistant terrestrial or maybe a popper or something like that. Sort of the other end of the spectrum for factory made leaders would be a 15 foot 4X Powerflex Trout. And I won't get this one out of the package because it's long and it would take a minute to uncoil. But you can imagine, it's 15 feet long. That's almost three times the length of that big nasty leader. And it also has a much longer tippet section. It's got about a five foot tippet section. So again, both boxes are checked for delicate turnover. That's a long leader and fine tippet and a long tippet at that as well. So now we're talking about this side of the fly box, your small dry flies and stuff like that. They would be appropriate with that size leader. The last point I'll cover is that um, you know, those are extreme examples and they're great in certain scenarios. Um, but I don't actually usually carry super specific leaders like that unless I know I'm going to be fishing a certain way all day. What I carry are sort of your generic leaders, which would be like a 9 foot 4x leader, like the one I've got rigged here. And these are right in the middle, you know, it's an intermediate length. Uh, it's got a relatively even uh, distribution of tippet to taper to butt section. So it's sort of a general purpose leader. And if I find that I need it to turn over more delicately on the water, that's when I actually start modifying my own leader. So if I start with a nine footer and I want it to be a more delicate 
presentation style leader, I'll simply add some tippet material because that does two things. It increases the length of the leader and it also increases the length of the tippet relative to the rest of the leader. So in this case, I would tie on 5X tippet to my 4X leader. And as a general rule of thumb, I don't like to jump by more than 2X sizes. So I think you could get away with tying 6X to your 4X leader. Uh, but I probably wouldn't go down to seven without sort of an intermediate step in there. Now, if I want to go the other way and make my nine foot leader turn over more powerfully, all I need to do is shorten it and shorten the tippet relative to the butt. So that's pretty easy. All I have to do is cut some of the tippet off. So I might actually feel my way up into the tapered section of the leader, cut it right there, and now it's more appropriate for throwing a terrestrial or something more wind resistant. The last way to modify a leader is uh, if you want it to turn over more powerfully, but you want to maintain the same length. So if all I do is cut tippet off, I've obviously lost length. So what I can do to rebalance it there for more power is add butt material. So in this case, I would actually unloop the leader from my fly line. Uh, I would loop about three feet of the Rio butt material onto the end of the fly line, and then tie the other end of that butt material to the butt end of that original leader. So that way I can maintain the same length, and, uh, but also keep the leader turning over powerful flies. And this butt material is nice because it comes in a few different sizes. This happens to be the 024 size, uh, which is ideal for four, five, and six weight rods. It comes in a couple other sizes too for more saltwater applications and things like that. So anyway, that's my strategy on the water. Uh, I typically carry more of the general purpose leaders and adjust as needed rather than uh, carry a whole array of very specialty leaders when I go fishing. Hopefully you've learned something in this episode and you're a little bit more confident tuning your own leaders on the water going forward. And thanks for tuning in to another episode of Rio's How To Series. If you liked this one, you can see the rest of the series online at rioproducts.com.